So recently in this corner of YouTube, it has come up that some atheists and heathens have been pushing for the show Talk Heathen to change its name. This disagreement has several angles to tackle. We will look at first, what does the word heathen mean? And this is broken into a couple of parts, namely, what is the original meaning of the word and what is the current meaning of the word? Second, um, given this information, we will look at whether or not it is proper for atheists to, to self-identify as heathen. And lastly, um, we should, uh, should the show Talk Heathen change its name? And does it hurt another marginalized community if it does not change its name? The major players here are Ocean Keltoy, X Cult Baby, and the show Talk Heathen. We also have Matt Dillahunty, Jim Aldrich, and the uh, ACA, which um, is the organization that runs Talk Heathen. Okay, so let's take a look at the history of the word heathen. Heathen's usage as a reference to the Germanic faith specifically comes up even in the sagas themselves, going back as far as the 11th century. Njal's saga, the most popular of our stories, refers to heathenism and heathens as the religion and its followers. And the Vinland sagas refer to Iceland as heathen at the time of the story. And this trend goes across the sagas. Now, the authors of the sagas were Christians, but the usage shows that the term was mainly meant to refer to Germanic folk practices, or at least evolved into that usage while the sagas were written. But did it refer to atheists? Possibly. But Christians at the time were already using the word atheist to refer to atheists. This doesn't mean, however, that it was never used that way, but whatever the case, it doesn't seem that including atheists was the primary usage of the term. Ocean's first book here is Njal Saga. Hopefully I'm not pronouncing that too poorly. And according to Wikipedia, as well as verified in further sources in the big bibliography, the uh, Njal Saga, or the story of Burnt Njal, is a 13th century Icelandic saga that describes events between um, 960 and 1020. It is an anonymous work with several theories about the author's identity. The second book was the Vinland Sagas, um, which the Wikipedia page is a bit more controversial. Wikipedia says they are two Icelandic texts written independently of each other uh, in the early 13th century. The Saga of the Greenlanders and the Saga of Eric the Red. The sagas were written down between 1220 and 1280, much later than the initial action 970 to 1030. So that's what Wikipedia says. However, if you dig a little deeper, the earliest manuscripts we have for both are from the 14th century. And at least one more manuscript from the 15th century for the Saga of Eric, the Saga of Eric the Red. It is believed that both were likely originally written down in the 13th century. So the earliest usage of heathen from these sagas um, is oral tradition um, written down in the 13th or 14th century, referencing approximately the time period of 960 CE to 1030 CE. When Ocean says the 11th century, this appears to be incorrect. I did leave a comment on his video asking him what he meant, what his source was for 11th century, but as of yet, he has not responded. And being that it's a comment, I'm not really that surprised. Um, but that's all right, Ocean, I can do you one better. In fact, I can do you 400 years better. Uh, for this part, let's take a look at a paper from Joshua Rod. Joshua Rod is a PhD student at the University of Iceland working on a dissertation on as uh, through. Uh, sorry if I pronounce that terribly, um, as Renovation of Old Norse Heathenism. The paper is called Heathen Linguistic Origins and Early Context. Now, if you're unfamiliar, Asathru is another description or another name for heathen or the heathen religion. The earliest usage of heathen that is not backdated that we can be relatively confident in 
is in 826 CE, where it appears in the charter of Ethelbrot. Ethelbrot was the king of Wessex, England. Now, I'm not really 100% sure how to pronounce Ethelbrot or Egelbert. Uh, in, in any case, um, I was unable to find a copy of the Charter of Ethelbrot in English. I did find something that appeared to be the Charter of Ethelbrot. However, it was not in English. Um, the translation was unhelpful. Um, so now I say I'm relatively confident in this being the earliest usage of heathen in Old English because uh, other sources also referenced the Charter of Ethelbrot but I, I just wasn't able to find a copy of it. So instead, we must look to the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, um, originally copied on the orders of King Alfred the Great, approximately uh, 890 AD. So basically the entries from the time of Christ to 890 CE were compiled all at once and then maintained by anonymous scribes until the middle of the 12th century. It is likely the scribes used the Irish Ulster Annals as well as other records to backdate entries before 980, sorry, 890 Daddy. CE. The first usage of heathen in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle is from 616 CE, that's 616 CE. According to Joshua Rod, it clearly draws from a Latin text, uh, Ecclesiastical History of the English People, Book 2, written by St. Bede, that's B-E-D-E, -E, apparently pronounced Bede. For clarity, um, I'm going to read this section from page 4 of Joshua's paper. After relaying the death of Ethelbert, both texts go on to highlight the refusal of his son, Adelbald, to become Christian. While Bede refers to Adelbald as living in a sinful manner that was so corrupt it was not even heard among the Gentiles, or Gentiles. The entry in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle records simply that he was living in Hedonim. Bede goes on to describe the departure of the bishops uh, Melthus and Justus from the Barbaros of Kent, or Barbarians of Kent, who had refused to be converted. He did not, <clears throat> he did not use the term Gentiles or Gentiles in this instance, however, uh, the, and described their religious practices to be, described their religious practices as being a demonicus cultibus or demonic cult. The Anglo-Saxon scribe who translated Bede chose not to differentiate between the terms gentes and demonicus cultibus and used the term heathen a second time. Um, so he, he chose not to differentiate between gentile and demonic cult and instead used the word heathen for both uh, instances. The, in the, the implications here are that while Bede chose the word Gentes to refer to Edelbald's people uh, who were part of a nation which was foreign to an established Christian nation and Demonicus Cultibus in clear condemnation of worship of deities which were in Bede's opinion clearly evil. The Anglo-Saxon scribe who translated this work had decided to bring these two separate implications from the two separate terms under the same moniker of heathen. The term no longer implied foreigner or country dweller. Its context is both that of being outside a Christian state and condemnable. This shows that heathen no longer strictly implied foreigner or country dweller. Instead, it now referred to any non-Christian. Now, we have just a few more sources for the history of heathen to uh, go over. The Gothic Bible or Wolfula Bible, uh, Ulfilus, is credited with creating the Gothic alphabet based on a Greek alphabet and translating the Bible into Gothic. It seems there were uh, likely a team that did this and his involvement, while likely, may not 
actually be um, accurately accredited to him. The word in Gothic that later became heathen is Gentile or Gentiles. Several sources called this the first usage of heathen, but it seems to be pronounced Thedo or Eudo. Uh, when looking for the first English translation of the Gothic Bible, as far as I can find, it seems to have been after the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. The word heathen has its roots in heath, meaning untilled land or tract of a wasteland, referring to the country or country folk or uneducated folk. Uh, it also implied foreigner or country dweller. Similar to the Greek word for pagan or paganus in Latin, um, pagan referred to villager, rustic, civilian, non-combatant, or someone who was outside Rome prior to Christianization. Um, after Christianization, of course, it became um, anybody who was not Christian. Later on, both heathen and pagan come to reference anybody who is not a part of a Abrahamic faith. So someone who is not uh, Jewish, who is not Christian, and who is not Muslim. The best case I can find for the earliest usage of the word heathen is in the 9th century CE. This usage describes a foreigner or outsider to the Christians, or both a behavior that it was sinful or unchristian-like, as well as a society that was described as a demonic cult. The word that it was translated from is Gentile, which refers to any non-Jewish person prior to Christians gaining power. After the Christians gained power, Gentile described any non-Christian. The original usage heathen from the 9th century is non-Christian. Therefore, this equally applies to atheist and heathen polytheists. If I've made a mistake or missed something, please let me know with a credible source down in the comments. There's your boring history. Thanks, Ocean. Yes, now that we have covered the origin of the word, let's take a look at its current meaning or usage. Well, sit down, strap in, because we're getting educated today. Okay. For those of you who don't know, there is such a thing as an actual heathen, and it's not an atheist. Let's look at what the actual dictionary fucking dot com says. Y'all ready for this? Heathen, a person who does not acknowledge the God of Christianity, Judaism, or Islam. Pagan, an uncivilized or barbaric person. The heathen, functioning as plural, heathens collectively. As an adjective, irreligious, pagan, unenlightened, uncivilized, barbaric, of or relating to the heathen peoples or their religious, moral, and other customs, practices, and beliefs. So... I don't want to say I told you so, but it's kind of right fucking there. Like, hi. Yes, it's right there. A person who is not a Jew, Christian, or Muslim. That is anyone who does not believe in the Abrahamic gods. An atheist is not part of or does not believe in the Abrahamic faith. So then in the definition, um, that's followed by a semicolon. Of course, we all know what that means. It indicates a pause in speech, typically between two main clauses. For instance, it applies to a person or group if they do not belong to group A or they already belong to group B. When Jen said an actual heathen is not an atheist, this is incorrect. Heathen is not strictly synonymous with atheist, but it does also refer to atheist. Okay, so let's see what Jen has to say about pagans. Let's look at the definition of pagan. Now, no longer in technical use, one of the people or community observing a polytheistic religion as the ancient Romans or, and Greeks, to a member of a religious, spiritual, cultural community based on the worship of nature of the earth, a neo-pagan. Three, disparaging and offensive, in historical context, a person who is not a Christian, Jew, a Muslim, or Muslim, a heathen, an irreligious or hedonistic person. Why am I bringing up pagan? This, because it literally means the same fucking thing. Heathen and pagan mean the same fucking thing. When you want to get into the historical context, just like atheists love to fucking say, oh, but, you know, historically this is what they said. You know what? They called people who didn't believe in the Christian God a fucking pagan too. So why are you quick to latch on the heathen? 
the word heathen, but not the word pagan. This is a weird objection. It's simple. They don't mean the same thing in our current cultural context. Pagan in modern usage is often seen as an umbrella term for a variety of mainly polytheistic religions. To illustrate, one might say that all heathens are pagan, but not all pagans are heathens. Heathenry, as we often call it, would be seen as a type of paganism. While some atheists may call themselves pagan, it is not common and they don't have to either. Let's move on. I would love to not reference a dictionary here at all. Ocean and I are, agree that they describe usage and they don't just prescriptively dictate how a word should or must be used. But there's still important information in the dictionary entries and in the etymology and historical usage of the terms. Yes, I agree. A dictionary only describes how a word is used and not how a word should be used. And this is a major part of the issue here. The word is currently used to describe heathen polytheists and atheists. As evidenced by the dictionary entry shown and the fact that people on both sides are using heathen to describe themselves, there should be no question that this is the case. It currently is used to refer to both groups. We've shown both historically and textually heathen is used for both atheist and polytheist. Atheists will fucking argue, well, we're taking it back from Christians. Christians didn't fucking label y'all this. If go back to the fucking 11th century, and they literally are writing fucking sagas about the belief, calling people heathens in this belief. They did not turn around and say people who did not believe in gods were heathen. They literally did not fucking say that. They said that people who worshipped these gods, people who practiced the Germanic pagan faith of Norse were heathens. So historically, that argument is not on your fucking side. Stop putting yourself out there as a fucking heathen. By the textual term, you're not. By the historical term, you're not. You're a fucking atheist. And that's fine. Be proud in that fucking term. I'm an atheist. I'm a non-believer. We have terms for that. No, Jen, the usage in this community, the dictionary, and of course, Twitter, yes, Twitter, uh, show that heathen is used by atheists to self-describe. And I've shown the sagas do not date to the 11th century, they, but they date to the 13th or 14th century. While a 9th century Anglo-Saxon chronicle shows Christians using heathen to describe any non-Christian, religious or not. Language evolves. Evolve with it. So should atheists use heathen to self-describe? Let's see what Ocean has to say about that. If we're going to do this, let's do this. Let's talk about the word heathen from a definitional perspective. The general point here is that atheists will pull out the dictionary and say, look, this definition or that definition is inclusive of atheists. Therefore, atheists should be allowed to use the term to self-identify. And there's a couple of problems with this. Firstly, I feel that this objection is a straw man of the discussion because heathens aren't really talking about whether or not someone is allowed to use the term or not. What's happened lately is that heathens, in looking for each other or our communities, have a difficult time finding content or communities related to us because the term has become associated with a variety of atheist content. This can make finding content tailored to heathens fairly difficult because of the fact that many of the shows that might have been named for heathens are actually atheist shows. <laughs> okay, but I must disagree with Ocean here. Self-identified usage is entirely the issue here. It's certainly more nuanced than simply that, but and, and we'll go into that nuance later. However, it is nonetheless the core of the issue. If it was blanketly okay for atheists to use heathen to self-identify, then there would be no issue with atheists having a show called Talk Heathen to talk about issues and topics related to atheists. If there are limits to how atheists should self-identify with it, or even more strictly should be allowed to use it, then there is a case here. To take a step back, is it okay for atheists to use heathen to self-identify? I have shown historically we were called heathens by Christians from the earliest usage. It is also used currently to identify atheists and non-Abrahamic theists. 
So my answer must be yes, it is okay for atheists to use heathen to self-identify. Okay, so now for the hard part. Yes, that was the easy part. This is the hard part. I've spent at least five days considering the arguments from both sides. To start out, let's take a look at what I think are the best arguments from both sides. Since y'all want to get fucking textual, y'all want to be fucking textualist. I'm going to use a, te a textual term. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the, the textual def definition of queer. The LGBTQIA banner Q is for queer. But in the dictionary, queer is defined as something strange or odd. Okay, it's just a side note here, but that definitely is in the dictionary. Anyway, j here, next, Jen does make a really good point. So let's say I wanted to go looking for a queer community. I type in, you know, queer, queer community. I type in queer on YouTube and I'm looking for content. I'm looking for other people like me. And I wander in to a place that literally turns around and says, we say we're queer because we think we're strange or we're odd. And then I get mocked. For all the fuck I know, this place is a goddamn right-wing fucking haven that decides they're going to take back the word queer from oh, the fucking rainbow stealers that they love fucking calling us. Anyway. And then I get mocked for it. The word queer literally means strange or unusual. This is what is happening to heathens. But please be mindful in your branding that you may be literally pushing somebody back into a fucking closet to conform to the Christian standard. Because everywhere they turn, they're being fucking mocked. They're not finding a place. Okay, let's take a look at Ocean's main points here. What's happened lately? is that heathens, in looking for each other or our communities, have a difficult time finding content or communities related to us because the term has become associated with a variety of atheist content. This can make finding content tailored to heathens fairly difficult because of the fact that many of the shows that might have been named for heathens are actually atheist shows. <laughs> and here's Ocean's stronger position. Which gets into what the actual objection is, at least from my perspective, which I've articulated before and I will articulate here. The popular definition of heathen is not what's at issue here. It's the usage by atheists of the term heathen as a synonym for atheist in various forms of activism and media, especially in media that is designed to attack, mock, or dismiss religions, including ours. So atheists using heathen as synonymous with atheist while and in the same context, they are attacking the heathen religion. Now, I think that Rudy, ex-cult baby, makes the strongest point, the strongest case here. Yeah, at the end of the day, I'm not part of the marginalized group that is saying this affects us negatively. So I don't know exactly how it affects them negatively. I'm, but I am in just about every other minority group I can think of. You know, I'm black, I'm queer, I'm assigned female at birth. Uh, I'm, I am both queer as far as my gender and my sexuality. And I'm an atheist. And there have been plenty of times when somebody told me that something was not an issue and I'm like, uh, yes it is. And just because you've never experienced that issue doesn't mean it doesn't exist. The worry is not that someone's going to call in thinking that it's a heathen show and be like, oh, it's an atheist show. Uh, the worry is that somebody is going to tune into the show thinking that it's something that is for their group and then find that it, in fact is dismissive and mocking and othering of that group. Which... Yeah, if I started watching a show that had queer in the title, just be, or listening to a podcast that had queer in the title, and I turned out that it was actually queer bashing, or it had trans in the title, and it was actually run by TERFs, or something like that, That'd be pretty fucking upsetting. Now, let's take a look at the opposition. Matt seems to reflect the views of the majority of people opposing the name change. It is very possible I missed some good points out there, so please let me know down in the comments if there are some good points or good positions that I missed, or if you have some new points that I have not addressed. 
I am in favor of changing the name of the show, but not for bad reasons. It's probably not a hill anybody needs to die on. And I honestly don't care whether or not Talk Heathen keeps the word or whether or not we end up changing it for some other reason. This is only about how we're going to make arguments and what kind of arguments we're going to make. And the fact that I thought it was ridiculous for somebody to say, you you shouldn't use that word because it makes it more difficult for my religious friends to find each other. Now, maybe I'm not heathen enough for Ocean, but I'm heathen enough for the King James Version of the Bible and centuries of smugly superior bigots trying to other anyone who didn't fit their mold. I won't be allowing another group to do it, and definitely not with bad arguments. I'm a heathen. Get used to it. I'll keep using the label, whether any particular show does or not. And if that makes it more difficult for people with irrational beliefs to find each other, that's just a bonus. Okay, Matt's major contention seems to be that he sees this as Ocean trying to take the label of heathen away from him and that making it hard for heathens to find other heathens is a bad argument. He then doubles down by saying, And if that makes it more difficult for people with irrational beliefs to find each other, that's just a bonus. Okay, so that's perhaps not the best take on this whole situation here. Now that we've heard the opposition, let's recap the arguments, the case for changing the name, uh, Oceanside here. Um, first, it makes it harder for heathens to find heathen content. Now, this is one of the things that Matt said, but it lacks the nuance of the stronger arguments. Second, while heathen is certainly inclusive of, it is not synonymous with atheists. Ocean's third point, the the, the real issue here uh, is that he feels that heathens feel attacked or otherwise mocked or dismissed by this type of content. I feel like Rudy put it best, and to paraphrase them, just because atheists are not part of a marginalized group doesn't mean they're not being marginalized. Just because you haven't experienced the issues does not mean that there is not an issue. And I have to agree with Matt in so much that we should come to decisions based on good arguments or reasons. After doing the research on the history of Heathen and reviewing the videos and clips, I spent several days considering these arguments. Argument one, it makes it harder for Heathens to find Heathen content. It is not the intent to make it harder for heathens to find heathen content. Not for this show, and not for any other atheist content labeled heathen that I am aware of. It also seems to be without warrant. While using incognito and looking up heathen in Google, you get pages of definitions. When looking up heathenry or heathen groups, you get mostly religious oriented content and more definitions. Matt also did the same on YouTube. There you find atheist stuff mixed in with a majority of heathen religious focused content. So argument fails. Argument one fails on these basis. Argument two, atheists are implying heathen is synonymous with atheist. Now I agree there is a lack of communication here. Language is only a shortcut to ideas. We should often try to speak more directly and be open to explaining or asking for explanation of terms we are using. On its own, however, it is not a good argument to change the show name. Finally, argument three. The content includes mocking, dismissing, and otherwise othering of the heathen religion and heathens. It is a combination of arguments two and three that marginalizes the heathen religion while at the same time using label that should be inclusive of heathens. We have a choice here. We can either participate in the marginalization of another group or we can stick to our humanism and work together with them for an equitable solution. In this case, I feel the best thing to do is to start by changing the name of Talk Heathen. And second, the, the way some hosts treat callers is unnecessarily harsh or abusive. That should be addressed by the ACA as well.
The heathens and pagans have been strong allies on a number of topics. The ACA had Ocean on at least Truth wanted, so apparently they valued his allyship in the past. While we do not always see eye to eye or agree on everything, in fact, we stand in staunch opposition on a number of things, I, nevertheless, greatly value their allyship. Ally with the subscribe button, research the like button, and go down in the comments. Let me know of any uh, corrections that need to be made. Cite your sources there. And let me know your thoughts on this topic. Is there something I haven't considered or is there uh, something I perhaps missed? Uh, discuss that down in the comments. Remember, you have no empathy for those you do not know. As your familiarity with a person or idea grows, the more empathy you develop. We do build models in our brains of people we've never met, so we do have some base empathy. It is important to get out there and talk to people who are different than us, who think different than us, who understand different than us. Build that empathy, um, build that understanding, build those relationships. Together, we make the world a better place. Thank you.